Antithyroid drugs block production of thyroid hormones. We use them when the production of thyroid hormones becomes substantially higher than normal, and this creates huge concentration of thyroid hormones in the blood. We call this condition hyperthyroidism. Currently, we have three major options in management of hyperthyroidism. It's drugs, radioactive iodine, and total thyroidectomy. So, to explain the mechanism of action, we have to know how thyroid hormones are produced. The major concept is that to produce thyroid hormones, thyroid gland requires a lot of iodine. So, initially, follicular cells of the thyroid gland uptake inorganic iodine. Inside the follicular cells, inorganic iodine undergo oxidation by a specific enzyme called peroxidase. And oxidase form of inorganic iodine we call simply iodine. After oxidation, follicular cells bind iodine to tyrosine and this results in formation of monoiodotyronine and diiodotyronine. MIT and DAT form triiodotyronine, and two DATs form thyroxine. Both T3 and T4 then transport it from follicular cells into the colloid. And inside the colloid, thyroglobulin immediately binds them, and in this binded form, T3 and T4 are stored until we need them. And if we have to increase the level of T3 and T4 in the blood, we cleave thyroglobulin and transport free T3 and T4 into the follicular cells. And then follicular cells release T3 and T4 into the blood. In the bloodstream, albumins immediately bind most of T3 and T4 molecules. T3 and T4, which are binded to albumins, we call protein bound thyroid hormones. And the major feature is that in protein bound form, thyroid hormones are inactive. But some portion of thyroid hormones are free of albumins. We call them free thyroid hormones. And such T4 and T3 are biologically active, so they can actually act on tissues. Also, T4 can be converted in peripheral blood to T3. And the reason behind this conversion is that T3 is the more active form. So by this conversion, organism can potentiate the effect of thyroid hormones. The first option in management of hyperthyroidism are drugs. And the first line treatment of hyperthyroidism are theonamides. We have three different theonamides. It's metimazole, carbimazole and propyl thiouracil. They all block a specific enzyme called peroxidase and by this they decrease the production of thyroid hormones by thyroid gland. Basically, metimazole and carbimazole is the same drug, but metimazole is drug in active form and carbimazole is drug in inactive form, so it's a prodrug. So, when we use metimazole and carbimazole, they block peroxidase. As we said, the only difference between them is that carbimazole is drug in inactive form and metimazole is drug in active form. With inactivation of peroxidase, the oxidation of inorganic iodine becomes impossible. So the amount of iodine decreases. With decrease in iodine, the production of thyroid hormones decreases. As a result, the amount of thyroid hormones inside the colloid decreases, and thereby the secretion into the blood will decrease. And the lower the amount of thyroid hormones in the blood, the less potent becomes their biological effect. The third drug from theonamides called propyl thiouracil. And propyl thiouracil is drug of choice in thyroid storm. Basically, propyl thiouracil has a similar mechanism of action. It blocks peroxidase and by this it decreases the production of thyroid hormones. With decrease in production of thyroid hormones, the storage forms of thyroid hormones decrease, and thereby their secretion decrease. And the lower will be the amount of thyroid hormones in the bloodstream, the lower will be their biological effect. But propyl has the second mechanism of action. 
In high doses, it blocks conversion of T4 to T3. So the amount of T4 increase, but the amount of T3 decrease. And recall that T3 is the most potent form of thyroid hormones. So not only the total amount of thyroid hormones will decrease, but also the amount of the most potent T3 form decrease. So in high doses, propyltiouracil is more potent than metimazole and carbimazole. And because of this, we use high doses of propyltiouracil in thyroid storm. Interesting that one of the effects of the beta blockers is inhibition of T4 to T3 conversion. And by this, they can decrease the biological effect of thyroid hormones and tissues. But teonomides have side effects. First of all, all of them can cause agranulocytosis, so they can decrease the amount of neutrophils in the blood. Metimazole during the first trimester have teratogenic effect, and also metimazole can cause cholestasis. And propyltiouracil can cause hepatic failure and unco-associated vasculitis. It's a rare side effects, but we have to know them. If teonomides do not help, the next option is radioactive iodine. Basically, it's an inorganic iodine with radioactive isotope. So the pathway of thyroid hormones remains the same. The only difference is that iodine is radioactive. And because iodine is radioactive, one such iodine in comes to the thyroid gland. Radioactive isotopes induce formation of reactive oxygen species. Basically, it's a free radicals. And free radicals induce severe oxidative stress in the thyroid gland. So, with time, oxidative injury will cause death of thyroid cells. And without thyroid, we cannot produce thyroid hormones. So, the level of thyroid hormones in the blood will decrease. The drawback of radioactive iodine is non-reverse damage. Because unlike teonomides, radioactive iodine do not block enzyme. It causes death of thyroid cells. And once thyroid cells are destroyed, we cannot compensate the loss. And without thyroid cells, we cannot produce thyroid hormones. So organism remains in permanent hypothyroidism. Also, radioactive iodine can cause worsening of ophthalmopathy. The reason is that once steroid cells are destroyed, there is more free anti-steroid stimulating hormone antibodies. And all these autoantibodies will come to the second site of action, which are fibroblasts. And stronger stimulation of fibroblasts will provoke higher production of extracellular matrix, and thereby proptosis will be more severe. And because it's radioactive iodine, radiation side defects are also possible. And the last option in treatment is total thyroidectomy. The problem is that if we surgically remove thyroid gland, we cannot produce thyroid hormones, and thereby patient will be in permanent hypothyroid state. Also, operation itself can cause damage to the recurrent laryngeal nerve, which can affect voice. And also, during operation, there is high risk of parathyroid gland injury, which can cause hypoparathyroidism.